Good morning. Welcome to Facebook Live and Abundant Love Ministries today. This is Pastor Mike of Abundant Love Church, and I'm just so glad you could be with us today. Whether you're listening live right now or at some point in the future by uh, going to the, our Facebook page or YouTube and listening there where it's been recorded, we're just honored and privileged to have you be a part of our services here at Abundant Love Church in Jacksonville, Florida. <laughs> Amen. You may not be here, but we are. <laughs> And uh, many of you are in Jacksonville. We're just so thankful for all of you regardless. Amen. Well, we've been teaching a series of messages uh, here in recent weeks on the subject of divine healing. In fact, we've called it the Healing Gospel of Foundation for Miracles. And uh, within this series of messages, there's coming emphasis on several aspects of healing by faith or, or, or what the Word of God has to say about healing. Uh, as we're teaching on this, much of our information has been gleaned uh, from what Christ the Healer teaches us from the Word of God. I want to be very careful to make sure you understand that we're not just teaching some teaching because somebody wrote a slick book and it sounds good, but this book is taken straight from God's Word and uh, it, it couldn't be any more scriptural if it tried. It's just it's fantastic. And listen, anytime I teach you, anytime I minister to you, in fact, anytime you sit under any ministry that claims to represent God or His Word, our Father, or, or the Lord Jesus Christ, anytime you do so, get your Bible out. Follow along in your Bible. If they cannot give you more than one text that verifies the point they're making, then you really need to be cautious about what that person's teaching. You can take one text out of context and make the Bible say anything you want it to, pretty much. Paul said in the mouth of two or more witnesses, let every word be established. And that's a pretty good uh, way to, to proceed when you're studying God's word or reading anything somebody has to say or listening to a teaching somebody presents, claiming that it is the word of God. If they're teaching the word of God, they won't be stumbled by you asking for scripture to validate that point they're making. Amen. Glory to God. Well, Listen to this, if you would. We're, we're teaching right now, and we're emphasizing the need to basically get on track from the beginning when it comes to faith. Uh, all too often, I have seen in my experience, people have tried to treat faith as though it's an event that we work toward, rather than a process that, that works through our lives. And there's a big difference there. See, if you're waiting for some event to happen, then you could wait till the cows come home, till Jesus gets back, and it still won't happen. You've got to get your faith active and involved. In fact, the Bible talks about several different things or aspects concerning this thought. One is the Bible tells us that hope deferred maketh the heart sick. In other words, if you don't reach your goal, eventually you're just going to give up. How many people have ever done that? I've seen a lot of people, even with, with what we've taught over the years, that they would come in, they would get all excited hearing God's word, and they would start the journey. Kind of like the disciples on the boat when Jesus sent them to the other side. They got in that boat and they left without hesitation, but they got about midway and the challenges came, and they had cast aside their faith by that point. We're going to talk about that hopefully today anyway. But, um, you know, that's where a lot of people are, and we've seen that over the years. They'll, they'll come in and, and the word of God ministers to them, it registers on their heart, and they start out in faith, but they don't keep sitting under the Word. They've treated it as though it was an event, and and there's nothing more to be had, and they walk away from that. And if they don't continue to feed upon God's Word and act upon God's Word, then chances are, if they got anything, they're going to lose it. You know, even in Revelation, uh, John was, was careful by the Holy Spirit to urge a certain church to keep that which they had. You've got to guard what God does in your life. If you don't, there's a thief that comes to steal, to kill, and to destroy. And it's nothing wrong with the preaching of God's Word. It's something wrong with the hearer. Somebody quit focusing on God's Word. Well, anyway, listen to this if you would. I, I want you to understand, uh, God wants you healed now. I, I want you to begin, even as we're teaching today, just saying to yourself that God in his word has sent his word to heal me. He's delivered me from my own destructions. 
You know what you're saying when you say that is that you know and you are claiming God's forgiveness, his mercies in the face of your sins and your failures in life. Because, see, the devil always wants to hammer you with those things. You, you could have done something 200 years ago if you'd lived that long. And uh, suddenly it's become a key issue when you start believing God for something. But you've got to count the blood sufficient. You've got to recognize that the sacrifice Jesus made once for all was sufficient to atone or really to redeem you from sin. In uh, James chapter 5 and verse 14, James by the Holy Spirit makes this statement. He says, Is any sick among you? Let him call for the elders of the church and let them pray over him, anointing him with oil in the name of the Lord. Notice the, the statement, any sick among you. In other words, in his mind, it wasn't acceptable for anybody who was sick in the church to remain sick or afflicted. Now, why would that be? Unless God provided healing for everybody that's ever experienced sickness in the church. I, I believe that's exactly it. Uh, the psalmist said, Bless the Lord, O my soul, and forget not all his benefits. Bless the Lord, O my soul, who forgives all my iniquities and heals all my diseases. Glory to Jesus. See, there's no hesitation there. He, he has provided universal forgiveness, universal healing for those that will take him at his word. You've got to believe God. You've got to receive what his word has to say about you uh, when you're prayed for. I love something P.C. Nelson made a statement about this, and P.C. Nelson was a scholar from days gone by that many refer to, including our mentor, Kenneth Hagin Sr. Uh, Dad Hagin used to talk about P.C. Nelson and how, how knowledgeable he was in the various languages uh, of the Bible and, and other languages of his day. In fact, somebody once asked him, they said, is it true, Brother Nelson, that you know 30... I think it was 32 languages. I'm, it could have been 36. I'm not sure. He said, no, I don't know any. He said, but I can speak and I can write in 32 or 36, whatever that number was. I'll, I'll have to look that up and see if I can find it for you sometime. <laughs> but it was, you know, about that many more than what I can speak and write in sometimes. So, uh, quite impressive. Well, Brother Nelson made the observation about this verse. He said, when it says, is any sick among you, in the original, in the uh, the the Greek, or the Aramaic, from which much of the New Testament was translated, it's saying, is there any among you believers who is incapable of doing for himself? Now that could be any number of people. It could be somebody who's backslidden and just doesn't have the confidence to pray for themselves at this point. They need somebody else to join their faith with them. Or it could also be somebody that's new to the faith, somebody that's young in the Lord, and they're yet to learn how to pray for themselves and how to believe God for themselves. But it's saying regardless of that, God wants them healed. And, and uh, I like this. It says, let him call for the elders of the church. It's not calling for somebody that's in a particular office. It's talking about somebody that's mature in the faith. Listen, as you mature in the faith, you need to know how to receive from God. And not just how you can receive from God, but how to share with others that they could receive from God. Remember when Jesus sent for the disciples, he told them, freely you have received, freely give. Now, how could they give something to others if they hadn't learned how to receive it themselves? It's a very important thought here. Because, see, sometimes we underestimate the value of receiving healing in our own lives. We, we think, well, we know God would love so-and-so to be healed, but I'm not so sure about me. Maybe I deserve this. No, God wants you to understand how you can receive so you can share with others in order that they can receive. Glory to Jesus. Well... It's never acceptable in the mind of God for somebody in the church to be sick and remain that way. And it's not that he condemns them for being sick. It's that he sent his word to heal us and deliver us even from our own destruction. Glory to God. He loves you. He doesn't want you sick, uh, uh, sick suffering, or, or afflicted. That's good news, saints. And my, my notes have locked up on me here. That is just so wonderful on my wonderful little computer here. Y'all just bear with me a minute if you would. Robin, can I get you to hand me my iPad down here? I don't know why this has happened, but it's locked up on me. Uh, <laughs> what a time for it to lock up. Let's pray. As Robin's handing that to me, let's pray. I'll get it over here and get my notes open in it if that's okay with you. And we will uh, pray and, 
and get into the message today. Gee, do you suppose there's something that the Lord's got me sharing today that might benefit you? <laughs> Seems like the devil would like to fight us sometimes when we're presenting the Word of God to saints and and, uh, and saints and ain'ts, <laughs> even to those that haven't heard, particularly sometimes those that haven't heard the Word of God yet. God wants to bless you. He loves you so much. And if there's anything the devil wants to prevent, he wants to prevent people from receiving the message of God's love or the tangible expressions of God's love that's presented to us through miracles. Let's pray. Father, we just thank you so much for your mercy in our life. We thank you for the, the things that you have already wrought in Christ Jesus. And thank you for giving us eyes to see those things, ears to hear your word today, Father. You said in your word that faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. And so, Father, we just claim today that as we hear your word, faith is coming to us. And as faith comes to us, we thank you that along with it comes wisdom, that we can act and be doers of your word. You said for us to be doers, not hearers only, deceiving our own selves. And so help us, Father, to have your wisdom, to have your direction that we can act in obedience toward your word, honoring you and receiving your benefits, your blessings that you afforded us by the sacrifice of Jesus, your son. Amen. Praise God. Now, it's kind of interesting, and I, I shared this last week, but I just want to briefly mention it again. Uh, in Christ the Healer, in the second chapter where he begins to ask the question or address the question of, did Jesus... Uh, provide for healing and the atonement that's not the exact title of the the chapter but it's it, it has to do with that subject when it makes when he makes that statement he goes on to make the um, statement that if you if you've ever been taught anything about Paul's thorn in the flesh being sickness or affliction you need to go back and read the chapter that they have recorded about that subject in the back of the book before you go any further in his book, Christ the Healer. In other words, from the outset of that second chapter, he wants you to, to get that obstacle out of the way. Why, why did he want folks to get that obstacle out of the way? Because he didn't want it to be a hindrance from them receiving as they began to feed their faith on the Word of God. And, you know, it's kind of interesting. He made a very specific comment a time or two in his, his book, Christ the Healer, F.F. F. Bosworth I'm talking about here. He made an observation a time or two about how many uh, multi, how many a multitude or a number of people how many of them had received healing while reading not after they read it's not like you're going to read the book and graduate and get your healing I mean that could be the case it could take you that that you know that that degree of knowledge or insight I, I have no idea but uh, I believe the sooner you get started in, in the exercise of your faith, the better off you are. And instead of waiting for it to happen, if you start thanking God right now that you are the redeemed of the Lord and you say so, and thanking the Lord that he satisfies your mouth with good things so that your youth is renewed as the eagles, if you'll start speaking what God's word has to say over you and claiming it now, then you may not have to read the next chapter before you receive your healing. Amen. <laughs> Glory to God. I'm forgetting your faith active and involved now. See, faith without works is dead. So if all you're doing is listening to these teachings or somebody else's teachings, if all you're doing is reading the Bible and not acting upon it or reading a, a biblical book and not acting upon the knowledge that's presented therein, then, then chances are you're deceiving yourself. And sometimes it helps us to ask the Lord, say, Lord, am I, am I on track here? Am, am, you know, show me the things that I can do uh, that will honor you by obedience to your word. Sometimes we look at God's word and we think, of, well, I can't do that, or I can't do this, or I can't do the other. Ask the Lord to show you what you can do. You know, Jesus was very specific when he, he told a man that had a withered arm, stretch forth thine arm, he told him what to do. And I believe as the shepherd of his sheep, he can speak into your life and give you direction so you'll know what to do if you'll just follow your heart and obey the, the word of God. Amen? So uh, look over, if you would, very quickly to 2 Corinthians chapter 6. Faith's a matter of timing, and you've got to get that issue right if you're going to receive from God. In Hebrews 11, 1, it says, Now faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. 
things that are beyond your natural perception and, and f things that defy reason sometimes. You know, the Bible tells us to trust the Lord with all our heart, not to lean to our own understanding. Why do you suppose the Word of God instructs us to do that over in Proverbs 3, 5? It's because sometimes the things of God that are spiritual just don't make sense to your natural mind. In fact, Paul told the church at Corinth, the natural man receiveth not the things of the Spirit of God. Well, who can receive it then? You've got to be born again. You've got to, you, you've got to have spiritual eyes and ears to hear and to receive what God is saying. And you need the Holy Spirit. He's the teacher. He'll lead you and guide you into all truth. Well, glory to God. Jesus even said, he'll call to remembrance. Call to your remembrance those things that you've been taught of the Lord Jesus Christ. I found that true come test day back in Bible school. I trusted God. My mind was so destroyed from all the abuse it suffered in my life prior to my surrender afresh to the Lord back in the, the late 70s. My mind was just not there. I've, I've shared this before. And listen, I'm not exaggerating, and I'm not just trying to be funny here. I had come to such a place that I had to stop to concentrate to remember how to spell my own name, the name I was given at birth, the name that I had written more times than I had fingers and toes to count a, a million times over. Uh, you know, I could not spell my own name. That's how uh, bad my, my mental condition was at that time. And yet the Word of God tells us that He restoreth our soul. You understand your soul is your mind, your will, your emotions. You are a spirit being. You're a spirit. Say this with me. Say, I am a spirit. I have a soul. And I live in a body. Glory to God. It, 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 my soul, man, was just in, in poor condition. My mind had suffered such abuse. But he restored my soul. As I fed upon the word of God, it was, it was life to me. It, it brought healing to me. And, and, uh, and thank God for the Holy Spirit. I kid you not, I would pray and thank the Lord for divine recall who was man to have the mind of God but we have the mind of well who was man to have the mind of Christ but we have the mind of God uh, you know I, I claim God's word I claim the restoration of my, my mind there's some of you out there you're dealing with somebody that's dealing with dementia or Alzheimer's and and or maybe it's just a medication they're having to take for their physical situation right now that's affecting their mind speak the word of God over don't don't sit there and talk about how that medicine's affecting them in a bad way or or yourself in a bad way quit saying since i started taking this i just can't remember anything start thanking god that you as a child of god are a sheep under the great shepherd the lord jesus christ and that he's restoring your soul read psalms 23 to yourself as though it's true and speak it over yourself because it is true well, glory to God. So I had you turn, and I didn't. Ha I, I didn't get myself yet. But Second Corinthians chapter six, Paul was speaking here. He says, "We then, as workers together with Him, speaking of Jesus, beseech you also that you receive not the grace of God in vain." In other words, what's he saying here? He's saying, "I want you to get every benefit that God determined to give you by sending His Son to be a sacrifice in your stead." Instead of you going to hell, I want you to live eternally and eventually join with me in heaven above. He, he, he's telling us here that he wants us to enjoy the benefits for which Jesus died. Those things that Jesus' blood was shed to provide. Now think about it. If you, if you paid that kind of price to afford a loved one some benefit or blessing, wouldn't you want them to receive it? And, and, and we're certainly no better than our Father God. So if we would want that, how much more does our Father in heaven above long to see us enjoy the benefits that came at such an incredible cost to him? And listen to verse 2. He says, For he saith, I have heard thee in a time accepted, and in the day of salvation have I succored thee. Behold, now is the accepted time. Right now is the time to receive your healing. Glory to God. I just thank God. I believe with you right now for healing in your physical body from the top of your head to the soles of your toes, from the inside out, including your mind and your mental faculties. I'm thanking God for healing in your life. He says, Behold, now is the accepted time. Behold, now is the day of salvation. God never put it off. Uh, I, I love this uh, over here in, in Luke 17. Jesus was ministering. And, and uh, you know, there were a bunch of, of 
religious Jews that there were some that actually knew who Jesus was. They were just jealous and covetous and they did not want to yield to the creator of the universe. They, they wanted to, to hold their place and their position and their influence over the community and they resented Jesus for coming in and receiving unto himself the, simply the honor he was due. And, and uh, over here, Jesus had just ministered to ten lepers. They had approached him. He told them to, to go and present uh, the appropriate sacrifice for their cleansing to the, to the priest in the temple. And as they went, it says they were healed. In other words, he, he didn't just wave a magic wand and say, Be thou healed. There were times he simply spoke a word. But in this case, he told them to act on the word. He said, Go act as though you're healed. It, it, you know, sometimes you need to stop and think, Well, since I believe I'm healed, what can I do? What can a healed person do that an unhealed person couldn't? And, and you're doing it on the testimony of Jesus. He's not a man that he should lie, nor the son of man that he should repent. He said it. God said it. He'll do it. You just need to start trusting God for it. I mean, does it make any sense to tell a man with an arm that's paralyzed to stretch forth your arm? Your arm? Does it make any sense when when somebody who attended your, your latest meeting couldn't even walk through the front door if it wasn't crowded? Uh, but but was let down through the roof on a pallet because he was paralyzed and couldn't walk anyway? Would it make any sense to tell that individual that your sins are forgiven thee? Take up your, your pallet and, or your bed and go home? <laughs> Amen. It just uh, it defies like trust in the Lord with all your heart. Don't lean to your own understanding. Sometimes you just got to set your head out of the way. Amen. Do what God and His Word is telling you to do and has told you to do. And, and uh, I tell you, you'll never regret obeying the Lord doing so in faith. So he says down here, uh, Jesus is responding to these individuals because, see, they're challenging him. They saw these lepers receive their healing, and now they're going to challenge Jesus. And, and uh, you know, why are they challenging him? Because he didn't do things the way they thought he should. I don't know who they thought they were that they should dictate to God his direction or, or the course of action he should take, but that's what they thought. And you know a lot of people do the same thing today. But it says down here, when he was in verse 20, Luke 17, verse 20, when he was demanded to the Pharisees when the kingdom of God should come, he answered them and said, The kingdom of God cometh not with observation. See, they were waiting for God just to swoop in and start doing miracles here and there and everywhere else. And he was, but it was on the terms that, that the need and the situation dictated in this situation. God needed a man in the earth at that point as part of his plan for humanity's redemption. <coughs> and so Jesus was born as a woman. And being born as a woman, being born as a man, he had authority to act in this world. And he came here to act in God's behalf. So that's what he was doing. God hadn't come to to basically implement his full authority and reign at that point, he had come to win back the right to do so. And, and so here Jesus is and he's ministering on a case-by-case -case situation. And as he goes, of course, he's ordaining others, first the 12, then the 70s, to go out. And then ultimately, all believers in, in uh, Mark 16 go into all the world and preach the gospel, the good news to folks. Well, so here he is and he's responding he says, the kingdom of God cometh not with observation. In other words, God's not going to just come and swoop in and do all these wonderful things while you sit on your backside doing nothing and waiting for God to do everything. You've got to do what you can do. You've got to use your faith where you're at. See, back in the Garden of Eden, if ever there was a time for God to swoop in and just act independent of man, I, I, I would have said it would have been... Uh, at the fall, even just prior to the fall of humanity. But he didn't. Why didn't he do that? Because it would have been illegal. In, in uh, John chapter 10, Jesus talks about the thief coming to steal, to kill, and to destroy. But before that, he, he tells us who the thief is. And, and the thief is someone that came up other than by natural birth. Somebody that came in through deception and treachery and deceived others. And of course, he's talking about the devil, but he also emphasizes the legality of how the good shepherd came in 
and and uh, in other words, that Jesus was here by purely legal right. Remember that uh, Jesus back in in uh, Luke chapter four, he he underwent the temptation of the wilderness, came through victoriously, went on to preach in the synagogue in Nazareth. And, and uh, while he was there, demons started to challenge him. And they'd say, we know who you are. Well, they were identifying him in his uh, identity as deity. They thought Jesus had come as God. But see, he even though he was God, he became a man. And he was operating in the capacity uh, of a man in the earth, not in the capacity of God. Because see, at that point, and, and yet to this day, presently, until Jesus returns for the church, <clears throat> humanity has authority in this world that God is yet to recover. God has recovered it legally, but he's yet to resume it. Let me say it that way. See, there's coming a day where uh, Jesus will return to this earth, and, and he's, he's going to touch the ground. And, and when he does, uh, every knee is going to bow. Every tongue is going to confess his lordship. They won't have a choice anymore, and it won't it won't benefit them. It, it'll just be their yielding to his supreme authority once and for all of eternity. And ultimately, those who never receive Jesus will be cast into a lake of fire that burns forever at the end of the millennium, we are told. Well, here, here we, we find that Jesus is telling these folks that it's not going to come. God's... God's influence in your life and impact upon your life and those you love isn't going to come by you sitting on your hands and waiting for it to happen. Well, I prayed and I'm just waiting on God. No, start speaking what God's Word has to say. Uh, when I pray, I believe that God heard me because I asked what I did according to His will. And He says in 1 John 5, over about verse 14, that if we ask anything according to His will, that He hears us. And if He hears us, or we know that He hears us, we know that we have the petitions we desired of Him. See, again, that verse tells us that before we ever pray, we need to know. We've got to ascertain God's will. How do you do that? Read the Bible. See how God has done others. See, we're going to talk about Paul's thorn in the flesh. And there's a lot of folks that have taught that Paul's thorn in the flesh was sickness and that it was a sickness for which God refused to heal Paul. Nothing could be further from the truth. Nothing could be further from the truth. Paul's thorn in the flesh was not sickness. It was a messenger from Satan. It, it was a, a persecuting demonic spirit and influence that seemed to harass him endlessly. But the Lord told Paul, my grace is sufficient for you. He wasn't saying I've not done anything about it. He was telling Paul, I've done everything necessary about this by enduing you with authority in this earth to act in your own behalf. See, Paul was kind of falling prey to the, the line of thought of a lot of people today in our day. They're, they're wanting God to do something about something that God has already acted with regard to. <laughs> you don't need to ask God to do anything more about the devil. He sent you to do something about the devil. Go into all the world, preach the gospel. And, uh, you know, it's amazing. If men would do what God has told them to do, the benefits and the blessings that come. He said, said, when you're preaching the gospel, even if you drink any deadly thing, it won't. didn't say when you did. It didn't say go try to drink some arsenic to see if your faith is working or some cyanide or whatever. No, he said, if, if somebody tries to poison you or if you're in a place where maybe there's not even good water, you can believe God for sustaining your life. And it talks about exercising authority over demonic forces. That's what he's talking about when he says you take up serpents. He's saying that, that you're not going to run from the devil. You're going to take him in hand and put him underfoot by the execution of your authority by faith. Glory to God. Well, anyway, so Jesus said, uh, The kingdom of God cometh not with observation. That is the end of verse 20 in Luke chapter 17. Neither shall they say, Lo here or lo there. Behold, the kingdom of God is within you. Glory to God. Amen. The kingdom of God is within you. <laughs> Amen. Y'all better be glad that I looked at my watch instead of my computer. My computer is froze on time as well. It says that it's 9.05. Listen, we're almost out of time here. But uh, it, it's just so important to start talking your faith right now. Amen. Uh, 
your faith will develop in progress as part of a process but you got to get it active you got to get it involved somewhere start feeding upon the word of god and asking the lord to help you to discover his will for your life as you feed upon it look at the life of jesus he's one translation says in hebrews that jesus is the very outreign of the divine in other words he's the glow that emanates from the the brilliance of the father's glory and he's a revelation of the heart of God to us. If you want to know the Father's will, look at Jesus. And I challenge you to find one instance where Jesus refused to heal anybody. Now, there were situations where he could not heal people that he'd come to heal. But there's never an instance where he refused to heal those who would believe and receive him for who he was. Glory to God. God wants you healed. He loves you. And he wants you saved. He wants you filled with the Holy Ghost. He wants you healed and set free. Let's pray. Father, I just thank you so much for those that are with us today and those that are online, those that will join us at a later point as they listen back to this on YouTube or any other venue that we place it on. Thank you, Father, that faith is coming through the hearing of your word. And as faith comes to them, along with that faith is wisdom, that they can be doers of the word, not hearers only. Because, Father, we refuse to be deceived. We thank you for sending your word. We thank you for healing us. We thank you for setting us free. And, Father, if there are any among us today that have never received Jesus, I pray that they would make this confession. And I invite you, if that's you today, I invite you to make this confession of faith. I believe, Father God, that you raised up Jesus from the dead. Jesus, I receive you as my Lord and Savior. Please assume the role of my Lord in my life. I'm going to call you Lord, and I'm going to trust you to, to be my good shepherd, to lead me in paths of righteousness for your name's sake. From this day forward, in Jesus' name, Father, I thank you that I'm saved. I'm the redeemed, and I say so in Jesus' name. Amen. God bless you, and we will see you next week. Thank you so much for being a part of our church and a part of our services here at Abundant Love Ministries. And uh, don't forget our live services here. If you're in Jacksonville, uh, we have live services every Sunday, 1 o'clock, at uh, Abundant, Love, uh, Abundant, Life, I'm, uh, uh, Abundant Life Ministries on Wilson Boulevard on the west side. God bless you. Thank you for being with us today. Amen.